The Sunbirds are looking strong after a great weekend of FPU sports. We'll have the highlights from last week as well as the story of Dora Vega, FPU's senior soccer player, grad student, and mother. It's all coming up right now on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. I'm your host, Katie Rocca. Last week, we brought you the story of Ethan DeYoung, FPU's former track star who made his mark on the U.S. track stage with a 15th place finish at the U.S. Olympic Trials in the summer. This week, the spotlight is shining on Cheyenne Kaufman, one of Fresno Pacific's super swimmers who came oh so close to a trip to the 2012 London Games. I got here my freshman year, my coaches both came from D1 programs. So um, having them telling me about um, what girls on their team in the Hunter backstroke were going, um, I wanted to do that. I, was, I had that drive to do that. And I think it was about my sophomore years, um, my, one of my coaches said, I think, I think you can make a trial cut. It was just kind of an idea that was just maybe said once or twice, and it just kind of stuck in my head. And then you, the next thing you know, the summer rolls around two years before Olympic trial cuts, and, or, and I made the cut. And it was just, oh wow, I can do this. My favorite part was just walking out onto the pool deck for my first race, um, my hunter back, and just the thousands of fans around you. I mean, it was, it was breathtaking and amazing. And I just remember jumping in the water and going, okay, this is it, you know, <laughs> it's here. So there was 164 girls in the hunter back. Everybody swam in the morning on June 26th, Tuesday, and they take top 16 for semifinals in the evening. I actually made it to that. Just being able to do that was huge because everyone there knew you were a semifinalist. I just remember actually being in the ready room before my, my hunter back and I had, um, a few NCAA swimmers in there along with some you know upcoming stars like Missy Franklin and such we were asking each other you know where we're from or how long we've we been swimming and stuff and um, <laughs> it was funny because they would ask me you know like oh I, I didn't see you at NC's or something or did you what school did you go to and I told them oh I went to Fresno Pacific it's an NAI school just you know hearing them say like oh wow I've never heard of that or that you know just that yeah like any good athlete can come out of any program you don't have to go to a big NCAA or big school to succeed in life so that was really cool just to say that yeah I, I go to Fresno Pacific so <laughs> ask any postgraduate student and they'll tell you it's not an easy task getting that extra degree if you talk to any student athlete around school they say it's tough to balance both school and the game they love any mother will tell you that keeping up with three kids and a husband can challenge a person's sanity. We spoke with FPU's Dora Vega about what it's like to handle all three at the same time. It's, it's a big challenge. It's definitely been a challenge, but a good one. It was really hectic at first. It was a little um, challenging. However, um, I'm getting used to the routine and my husband and I, um, we do a good job communicating who's going to pick up the kids and just... Uh, making sure who has the right vehicle with the three car seats every time. <laughs> Typical day is, is when that alarm goes off, it's, it's a madhouse. Getting up, getting the kids together, getting them in the car packed up, getting my wife's stuff together, making our lunches and on our way. And, and at the end of the day, it's the same thing. I have morning, all my classes are in the morning. So there's a, the time between my morning classes and practice where I do get my study time in. So on campus, I'll get about two to three hours of study time a day. And then I come home. And by the time I get home, it's seven, between seven and eight o'clock. Give the kids dinner, take them a shower, put them to bed. It's now it's about nine, nine thirty. And then I do homework till about midnight. And then I wake up and probably I set my alarm for five thirty, but get up like six, six thirty sometimes. And I try to do some chores then and 
then get out of the house by 7, 7.15. So it was always this uh, need to have closure with her, her senior year of playing soccer and doing track. So it was just always through my encouragement and just her desire to want to return and, and finish and complete that last year at the same time go back and finish up her master's. I always wanted to come back, but I always also would end up getting pregnant and other unforeseen events would happen. So um, there's always something that stopped it. And then this year, um, I had applied to grad school somewhere else, and I didn't get in. And then I, was, uh, I prayed about it, and I do feel that God has led me here again, and he closed doors for me. And um, everything I do, I pray about it first, so there's no doubt in my mind that the things that have happened is because God has um, been there with us every step of the way, and that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I know that I'm um, here serving God, doing God's will. It had been actually six years since I have last played soccer at a competitive level. Obviously, I had a lot of adrenaline in that game, and I just came out and. It was a little bit difficult. I remember I thought I was in great shape. I had been preparing myself, um, running and everything. And then the first game, I doing those runs and getting banged up at the same time was uh, it was a little. I was a little tired. <laughs> it's been it's been great. I think it's it's been perfect to have our kids at at this age and just giving them the opportunity to see, you know, their mom play and possibly encourage them to go to college and and do the same. Now that they're at that age where they're understanding what's going on. It was a great week for Fresno Pacific Athletics and here with a look at highlights is Brandon Tripp. FPU playing host to Cal State San Marcos on Saturday night for a rematch from last year when the Cougars pulled out a 2-1 win in San Marcos. That was not the case tonight. Some trouble early on for the Sunbirds. Late in the first half, goalkeeper Steven Waite goes up to make a play on the ball and is injured on the play. He would be forced out and did not return. In the second half, Fresno Pacific capitalizing on all kinds of chances. Starting with this one, Fabrizio Nazare plays it through to Paul Islas, who is blocked by the keeper, but Bruno Pessoa... In his first game back from injury, finds the back of the net, and that was just the start for the Sunbirds. 64th minute now, and it's East Loss who launches the throw-in, and it finds Alvaro Nogales, who finds Guillermo Talancon for the finish, Sunbirds up 2-0. Just two minutes later, it's Nogales with the fancy footwork and the cross right to Pessoa, who buries it in the back of the net. Sunbirds up 3-0. They were not done yet. Ten seconds later, Gustavo Silva in his first game of the season rips it past the keeper. Sunbirds up 4-0. Remember when we told you that Waite would have to leave due to injury? Well, his backup, Fabian Rothel, did a superb job in net to preserve the shutout for the Sunbirds, who win 4-0. Uh, yeah, they're looking for me in the box, so it helps me to, to just play my soccer, you know, the because I'm taller than most of the guys, so just like threw the ball in my head, and they, they've been looking for me a lot. I think tonight we really showed what our team can do on the attacking side. I know we talked earlier about what kind of caliber of players we have, and I think you know the last couple of games we've just been really, really able to show what we can do. You know, we were able to get forward a lot better in the second half. I mean, we had chances in the first half, but I think we definitely created more in the second. And so it was difficult to break them at first. We only had a couple of opportunities, well, two or three opportunities in, in the first half where we scored, but we were offsides. We were able to get through. Not as many as we're accustomed to when we play a team that opens it up. We pushed our outside backs also forward because we were basically playing by ourselves in the back in the first half because every one of their def def players, all 10 players, were going back. So they had 11, including the goalkeeper players, back behind the goal. And... You know, everything was getting closed down, and so that different look in, in the strikers, uh, I think, really opened things up for us a little bit more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased at the, um, at the result. I'm pleased at the shutout, more importantly. Um, pleased also that a, as a result of, uh, of Steven's injury, a goalkeeper, Fabian Rangel, came, came in and kept the shutout, did a fantastic job. I thought he made some significant saves. Sunbirds at home against Cal State San Marcos looking to build on an impressive 0-0 draw against CSU Bakersfield last week, but it was not to be. 19th minute, the Cougars get the corner kick, and Kelsey Gunyan settles it and sneaks it past keeper Sarah King for the early 1-0 lead. 
Later in the half, Sam Marcos with the breakaway chance, but King comes out and makes a good play on the ball, absorbing the contact to keep it 1-0. Cougars with the corner again, and it heads up in the air. King punches it out, but CSU Sam Marcos settles it, and a brilliant save by King. She finished with five saves on the night. 86 minutes, Sunbirds down two, and Paulina Good rips it from long range and puts it in the upper right corner. Cougars get the shutout win, 3-0. You know, I just we know that, that San Marcos each year is going to bring intensity and, and a certain level of, of um, aggressiveness to the game and, and, you know, very physical match. And, uh, you know, we, we, we didn't match up real well in terms of responding to that uh, and, and also just weren't able to, to create a rhythm of play that, that you know, we, we like to try to establish during the game. I thought um, San Marcos was real effective at, at neutralizing us in, in that sense and, and kind of taking us out of what we were trying to do with the ball. Uh, another learning experience, you know, kind of difficult coming off a, a good defensive performance, actually a great defensive performance against Bakersfield um, to concede three goals in this game. But uh, we talked to the girls and we know we have to um, – you know, do a better job of, of taking care of the ball um, as well as creating our opportunities because we just didn't get a lot of opportunities at goal tonight. So, American River in town at Sunnyside Aquatic Center to take on Fresno Pacific and what would quickly turn into the Daniel Seymour show. Seymour in the first quarter with the shot from the outside and he buries it in the net. Sunbirds would take an early 2-0 lead. Then Seymour with the five meter penalty shot skips it in, his second of six goals on the day. Now it's goalkeeper Jake Finney who finds the beautiful outlet past to Sasha Ludwig who fires for the Sunbirds in a battle with the Beavers who at the end of the first quarter put it in the back of the net as time expires. Sunbirds down by one now and it's Seymour again from way outside to pull FPU even. Beavers will go into the break with the lead but afterwards it was all FPU. Sasha Ludwig with fantastic defense gets the block, forces up the bad shot. On the other end it's two meter specialist Glenn Lyon with the beautiful turnaround shot. Sunbirds go up by three and they would not look back. Final score, FPU 17, American River 13. The Sunbirds would also take game two of the doubleheader, 20 to eight. You know, general thoughts, it's uh, first home game, so you always have those initial uh, jitters. But uh, the guys, they started off a little rough, and then the third quarter, they started to get into their groove. Yeah, Seymour, a uh, freshman that's coming in confident. Um, we're excited to have him, and uh, he's uh, opening up that whole right side of the pool for us tremendously. He's got a great shot. He's quick up and down the pool, smart player. And, uh, our guys have recognized that, and so we're capitalizing on it. It's a good job, and guys, uh, teams, other teams get scared of, uh, of him up at that top uh, with his outside shot. So, all in all, it opens up the entire pool for us, opens up all our shooters from the perimeter, which is nice. Thanks, Brandon. Here's a look at the other scores from last week. Women's volleyball went 4-0 over the weekend at the Route 92 showdown in Hayward. The Sunbirds dropped just two games in the entire tournament during a five-game match against San Francisco State. Kathleen Anderson and Hoopia Inc. were named to the all-tournament team for Fresno Pacific. Cross Country competed in its first meet of the season at the Humboldt State Invitational. The men placed third behind strong finishes from Dallas North, Cody Kinsman, and Marvin Ortiz, who finished 17th, 18th, and 19th. The women finished 5th with a solid 19th place finish from freshman sensation Sarah Agazignali. You might ask, what's going on this week? Where can I go support my fellow Sunbirds? Well, here's a great look at what is happening this week with Fresno Pacific Athletics. The volleyball team will play two matches this week beginning with a trip to St. George, Utah to play Dixie State on Thursday. Then it's down to Phoenix, Arizona for a showdown with the number 12 Grand Canyon Antelopes. Both games are set for 6 p.m. start times. Soccer will be in town once again this week, taking on California Baptist on Thursday at 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. before welcoming in Grand Canyon on Saturday. The Lopes men's team is coming off a huge upset win over number one, Fort Lewis, and are ranked number eight in the country. Water polo is back in action at Sunnyside Aquatic Center this weekend with a doubleheader against Caltech and the Fresno State Club team. The matchup with Caltech will begin at noon with the Fresno State Club game to follow. Remember, you can stay up to date with all the latest news, scores, and highlights for the Sunbirds at fpuathletics.com and on Twitter at FPU Sunbirds. Glad you could join us this week, and we'll see you next time right here on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics.